We already know how to calculate the moment caused by a force about a point O using the vector formulation. MO equals to R cross F, with R being the position vector from point O to vector F. But since F is a vector, it can be resolved into two or even more component force vectors following the parallelogram law. So if F equals to F1 plus F2, then MO equals to R cross F1 plus F2, and then following the distributive law, M equals to R cross F1 plus R cross F2. And R cross F1 is simply the moment caused by the force component F1 about point O, and R cross F2 is the moment caused by force component F2 about point O. Therefore, we can conclude that the moment caused by a force can be calculated by summarizing the moments caused by its component forces about the same point, and this is the principle of moments. But why do we care about the principle of moments? We want to use it to help us simplify the calculation of moment. Therefore, normally, if we know the point of action of the force, in this case point A, we would resolve the force vector into a horizontal component Fx and a vertical component Fy. Since this way, the moment arms of these two component forces can be quickly determined by the coordinates of point A, x and y. And therefore, the calculation of the magnitude of the moment can be easily achieved to be Fx times its moment arm y plus Fy times its moment arm x. Note that the sign will change to negative if the force causes a clockwise rotational effect instead. Even better, sometimes we can conveniently resolve the force into one component that is along the direction of R, pointing from point O towards point A, and another component that is perpendicular to R, as shown here. The advantage is, this way, the moment arm of F1 is simply the magnitude of R, or in other words, the distance from point O to point A, which can be easily determined, and also, the moment arm of F2 is simply zero. In other words, component force F2 does not create any moment about point O because its own line of action passes through point O. Therefore, the total moment can be easily calculated to be M equals to F1 times R. Again, positive magnitude indicates counterclockwise rotational effect. Note that the principle of moments also applies to 3D problems. It is up to you to decide what is the best way to carry out this principle of moments, what is the best way to resolve a force into its vector components so that it can help you simplify your calculation. And this comes with practice and experience. In this example, we need to determine the total moment caused by the three forces F1, F2, and F3 about point A. We have several options in terms of how to solve this problem. We can use the vector formulation that we learned before, but since this is a 2D problem, using scalar formulation is probably easier and more straightforward. To use the scalar formulation, we can choose to apply our knowledge of geometry and determine the moment arms d1, d2, and d3 for the three forces respectively, and then use this equation to do the calculation. However, that's probably not the most convenient method. Instead, let's apply the principle of moments, which means that we will first resolve these forces into components, Again, there are unlimited ways to do that, but from observation, I decided that it is the most convenient to resolve the forces into their respective horizontal and vertical components. Again, from observation, we see that these two force components do not have moment about point A because their lines of action pass through point A. For the remaining four force components, their moment arms to point A are easy to determine. Therefore, we can do the calculation and get to our answer. 
You can try to solve this problem using other methods as well, and do your own comparison to decide which method is the fastest. Again, it is always up to you how you want to choose the best method.